We're going to start today with a little quiz on warning signs. So I'm going to show you a bunch of warning signs that you would see on the roads. And I'm going to give you five seconds to shout out what they mean and then the, the answer will be revealed. Hey, well done. I'm not sure how hard or easy that was, but if anyone got 10 out of 10, I am very impressed. You could take your driving theory test. Uh, so the reason we started with that quiz is that the parable we're looking at today is a warning. We talked about this in one or two of the videos before, but I think it's important for us to remember that Jesus doesn't give us warnings to ruin our fun. He warns us because he loves us. So let's keep that in mind as we listen. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. So we're given a picture here of two men. First of all, you've got the rich man. Purple and fine linen is kind of the ancient equivalent of top designer labels now. So you have to imagine this guy has a walk-in wardrobe full of uh, his designer suits and stuff. And it says he lived in luxury every day. So I'm thinking a big house, a fancy car, all the latest gadgets, his own personal trainer and personal cook. You name it, he had it. And in contrast, there's this poor man, Lazarus, whose life looks very different to that. Think of a homeless man and you're on the right lines. Lazarus spends his time sitting by the gate to the rich man's house, begging for help, rifling through his bins for the next meal. He's a bit smelly and only has stray dogs for company. So out of these two, I wonder who you would rather be. It's a no-brainer, right? But listen to what happened next. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in an agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. You might recognise the name Abraham from the Old Testament of the Bible. Abraham was a follower of God who would lived a long, long time before Jesus. The Jews saw him as a kind of founding father of their faith and their race. So to say that Lazarus was next to Abraham is to say that Lazarus is in heaven. So what we've got here is a total and complete role reversal, right? Lazarus has gone from begging on the streets to spending eternity in heaven. 
and the rich man has gone from a life of luxury to an eternity of pain and torment. I wonder who you'd rather be now. It seemed like the rich man had a much better life, didn't it? But now we see it was actually the poor man, Lazarus, who had a friendship with God. And as that's the only thing we can take with us when we die, it was actually Lazarus who was better off in life. Now the super religious people of 30 AD, the Pharisees, are listening in as Jesus tells this story. And I wonder if Jesus is really telling it to them. See, the Pharisees, they looked really religious. And I think the rich man in the story could have been quite religious looking too. Remember how he called Abraham Father Abraham? He probably counted himself as a good Jew with Abraham as his kind of founding father and went to synagogue, maybe even read the scriptures. And then back to the Pharisees, the Bible tells us a few verses earlier that in their hearts, they loved money more than they loved God. And it looks like the same is true of the rich man in Jesus' story. He was absolutely loaded. So while he was alive, he could so easily have given some of his money back to God by helping poor Lazarus on his doorstep or in other ways. But it looked like he just preferred to keep it all for himself. And his love for money kept him from truly loving God. Now, just like in the parable of the rich fool, which we looked at two weeks ago, I think, with his big barns, the rich man in this story dies too. And where he goes to, his Armani suit, his fancy iPhone and his personal chef can't help him. Because remember, the only treasure we can take with us when we die is our friendship with God. And it doesn't look like this rich man had one. So Jesus' warning to the Pharisees and to us is this. Don't be like the rich man. Having a friendship with God now really matters because it's only through Jesus' death for us that we can spend eternity with him in heaven. And once we die, that opportunity is gone. Our eternity is decided. And God knows what's in our hearts. So acting religious like the Pharisees by going to church or reading the Bible is not going to make the grade. God is looking for a real friendship with him that changes every part of us including how we use our money and our stuff. Now there's actually another little bit to Jesus' parable, which we'll think about quickly now. The rich man had one more request to make. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. So the rich man is worried for his brothers. Maybe he knows they're living like he did loving their money and their stuff more than they love God. He wants Lazarus to go back and to warn his brothers to repent and turn back to God so they don't end up where he is. And does Abraham think that's a good idea? Does he think the brothers would listen to Lazarus? No. Abraham says, you know what? They've got the Bible. Everything they need to know is in there. There's so many warnings to turn back to God in the Bible. And if they won't listen to what the Bible says because they love their money so much, then they won't listen even if someone rises from the dead to warn them. Now, we're a bit like the five brothers in this story because we still have the opportunity to listen to what God says in the Bible and turn back to him. There are loads of opportunities for us to listen to the Bible through Ignite or J10 at home, through coming to church services or through reading the Bible for ourselves. So let's make sure that we take, make the most of those opportunities and listen while we still can. And it's great if we can invite other people to listen to the Bible through these things too, because we want everyone to have the chance to hear about Jesus and turn back to God. 
thanks for listening guys i'm just going to say a short prayer now and if you want to make it your prayer just say amen at the end which means i agree so father god thank you that the bible tells us everything we need to know Thank you that it tells us about Jesus and how we can be friends with you through him. Please help us to trust in Jesus and help us to be careful with our money and our stuff, that they have the right place in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.